So the other day, someone suggested recreating the disintegrating enemies effect from Demon's Souls game. It's not an effect exclusive to this specific game, it exists in other games. This technique can also be used to recreate this running dog from Doom Eternal, for example. Anyway, it's a pretty cool one, so I decided to recreate it in Unity. And this is what I came up with. I can shoot some projectiles, and then the enemy disintegrates itself, and I think it came out not that bad. It's an interesting effect and I'm gonna show you how to do it. But first, these videos are only possible thanks to my Patreon supporters. By supporting me you get access to these projects, and many more that I have in my channel. So let's see how we can disintegrate some enemies. So this is composed of two major parts, shooting projectiles and disintegrating animated objects. I will talk about shooting projectiles towards the end of this video, for now let's focus on the disintegration effect. The disintegration effect is composed of four essential parts, a 3D model, a dissolve shader, I'm gonna show you how you can create one, particles coming out of an animated character, and the disintegrate script where we put everything together. So I went to mix some. I chose this zombie, which is called Drake. I searched for an idle animation and downloaded it with FBX for Unity and with skin. Then I searched for a die animation and downloaded it without skin. Imported to Unity and with the idle object selected. I'm gonna extract textures. This normal map settings shows up, you can press fix now. Now Drake has the proper textures and the materials work well. Now in the rig, set the animation type to humanoid. Create from this model and press apply. So you get this avatar down here. Now we need an animator controller. I'm gonna call it Drake Anim Controller. And then I'm going to create an empty game object for the enemy, Drake in this case, and reset to transform. And then I'm gonna parent the zombie idol, drag and drop. We can scale it up in the bones, not the objects, the bones only. Just like this, looking good, look at this Drake boy, looking fantastic. We need to assign the animator controller to the animator, just drag and drop. And for the animator controller, where we create two empty states. The first one is for the idle animation. We create a connection to the second state, which is for the die animation. This one. And then we need a parameter a trigger parameter called die, which is going to be used in this transition. You can add it here. And if we test this out, yeah, poor Drake. Anyway, in my case this was happening, because in the idle object I have two animations, so I removed the one that is bugged, and rename it to zombie idle or something. And then don't forget to turn on loop time, and in root transform position XZ, Turn on bake into pose, otherwise his feet are going to move a lot. And now it's almost perfect. To fix this I turned on bake into pose for the root transform position Y and offset it minus 0.3 for example and then apply the changes. And now it gets back in place. So this was the basic setup for a Mixamo character. Now let's move on to the dissolve shader. So right click. We are going to start with a blank shader graph. I'm going to rename it to Dissolve Shader Toot in my case. I'm going to open it up with double click and in the graph inspector. I'm going to add a target, in this case Universal. It's going to be lit, metallic, opaque and we need an alpha clip and two sided. Alpha clip is for Dissolve and two sided so we can see it from both sides. And we need quite a few parameters. Most of them are for the PBR settings. You can start by adding a color, which is going to control the color of the character in this case. And then we want a float for the metallic and another float for the smoothness. We are basically recreating the default lit shader. We also need a text to default the albedo. Another text to default the normals. A float for the normal strength. Another texture 2D for the ambient occlusion if you want it, and another float for the ambient occlusion strength. And now we need parameters for the dissolve, like a color for the dissolve color, 
a float for the dissolve amount, another float for the dissolve wide, and another one for the dissolve scale. And now we can connect the metallic and the smoothness to their respective inputs of the shader. Now for the color, in the graph inspector we can set the mode to HDR and the default color to white with full alpha and in the albedo for the texture I'm gonna assign the diffuse map that came with Drake, one of these. Now it's very simple, we need to sample the albedo and multiply it with the color and we got the base color done. Then for the normals I'm going to assign the normal map of Drake, set the normal strength default value to 0.5 and now we need to sample the normals and say that the type is normal. To control the normal strength we got a node for that, it's called the normal strength node, this one, and we can then connect the normal strength property. And all of this is going to be connected to the normals input and we can do the same for the ambient occlusion. We assign the texture, we sample the ambient occlusion, and we multiply it with the ambient occlusion strength, which should have a default value of 1. This can be connected to the ambient occlusion input, and all of this that we have done, we can group it, and it was for the PBR settings. Otherwise, you will only have the dissolve effect. Now, for the dissolve part, we can start with a simple noise, connect the dissolve scale, for example and set the default value to 30. If we connect this to the alpha, as you can see, we are already dissolving, because the alpha clip threshold is at 0 0.5. If we play with that, as you can see, we dissolve or we do not dissolve. So we can connect the dissolve amount to the alpha clip threshold. But the dissolve amount should be a slider between 0 and 1, like this. Now for the bright edge that we see dissolve effects, we need a step node. In other words, this will basically simplify the black and white values of the noise texture. But if we want to control the white, we need to first add to the dissolve amount the dissolve white and then connect it to the step, to the in input. The white should also be a slider between 0 and 0 0.2. If we increase the white to 0 0.05 and the dissolve amount to 0 0.5, this is what we get. As you can see, it's black and white. Now we simply need to multiply this with the dissolve color. Which should be in HDR mode, and with the default color of, uh, well, whatever color you want, just make sure to increase the alpha and a little bit the intensity. And you are good to go, you can connect this to the emission. And here we go. We got a dissolve shader, a dissolve material. Just don't forget to press the save button to save the shader. Cool, we just need to create a material out of this shader. So we right click in the project folder, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a material. I'm going to call it Drake Dissolve 01. Because Drake has two materials, as you can see, if we select the skin and mesh renderer, it has two materials. So, and the first material is using this texture. So I'm going to assign this texture to the Drake Dissolve 01, just like this, which is already assigned. It. And Normals. Once you have assigned the proper textures, you can assign that to this skin and mesh renderer in the material slot, just like this, as you can see. For the second slot, we can duplicate the Drake Dissolve 01. And now you need to assign the proper textures, of course. And then you can assign the Drake Dissolve 02 to the second slot, like this. And now, as you can see, if we play with the dissolve amount, we are indeed dissolving this creature away. By the way, if you want, you can increase a little bit normals to 1 and the smoothness to 0 0.7, so it becomes a little bit more fleshy. Anyway, the next part involves the latest tutorial that I made, which is character effects in Unity VFX Graph. So you can spawn particles directly in an animated object, as you can see. So after you have followed that tutorial, you should probably end up with a VFX graph that says particles to animate character. That's the one I have here. I just changed the name. We need to parent this to the enemy underscore Drake. And reset to transform. 
And now in the enemy Drake parent object, we need to add the skin and mesh to mesh script, which is a script we created in the characters effect tutorial. And now, as you know, we need to assign the skin and mesh and the VFX graph. And the refresh rate we can set to 0.04 or a little bit more, so this doesn't get too heavy. I'm gonna apply the changes to prefab, and if we test this out, we should see particles coming out of this creature. Exactly, just like this. It only plays one time, because if I open up this VFX graph, you can control the loop duration in the spawn. If you select the spawn block, you can set the loop duration and the loop count to constant and then say how much time you want this to play in the loop duration. I've set it to one second and that's why it only plays particles for one second and it's not looping. The last step we need to do is to create a script so we can play all of this together. We can create a C-sharp script and rename it to Dissolving Controller. You can assign this to the enemy drake object, like this, in the same place where we have assigned the skin and mesh to mesh, if we open this up, what we need now is a few public variables. One is for the animator, in case you want to play animations. The other one is a skin and mesh renderer variable, so we can get the dissolve materials and play with the dissolve amount. And the other public variable is for VFX graph. It's a visual effect property. We need to import a library with using Unity Engine dot VFX. We can call this one VFX graph, and then we need a few floats like for the dissolve rate. We can set it default value of 0.02. Another float for the refresh rate. We can set it at 0.05. That's pretty much it for now. Now, as soon as this starts, we need to disable VFX graph. So if VFX graph is null. We need to stop it and then go to the game object and set active to false. So we make sure that there isn't any particle spawning. Then we need to cache the dissolve materials. So if skin and mesh render is not null, we actually need a private material array, we can call it dissolve materials. And this dissolve materials is going to be equal to skin and mesh render dot materials. Ok, so we stop at the VFX graph and we got the dissolve materials. Now we need an I enumerator because we need to play with some timings. I'm gonna call it dissolve. And the first thing I'm going to do is if the animator is not null, I'm gonna set the trigger to die, which is a trigger that we have added to animator controller in the beginning of this video. And then I'm going to wait a certain amount of time. I'm gonna add a little delay like 0.2. If you want, you can create a public variable for this a float, you can call it the die delay, for example, 0 0.2, yeah, new wait for seconds, by the way. And then, well, if VFX graph is not null, we can set the game object to active, and then play the VFX graph. What we also need is a local float, you can call it counter, that starts at 0. And now we are going to say, if the dissolve materials length is bigger than zero, if there is any material, then while dissolve materials, for example, the first material on the list, we can get a float, the dissolve amount underscore, while it's less than one, we are going to do something. By the way, this dissolve amount underscore, you need to set it in the shader, in the dissolve amount property, you need to rename the reference, because that's what the script is going to look for. Make sure it's dissolve amount underscore, so it's the exact same name as it is in the script. So while the dissolve amount is below 1, while the character is not totally dissolved, we want to increase the counter with the dissolve rate amount, and then we are going to go through each dissolve material with this for, and in each material, we are going to set a float, which is dissolve amount underscore, we are going to set it to the counter. That's how you animate properties from a shader graph, from a material. And finally we can wait a small amount of time, which is the refresh rate. Lastly, if you want, you can destroy the enemy after a second. Now to test this out without the projectile, we can test it with the space bar. For example, if we say if input.getKey down, 
open brackets key code dot space, then we can start the dissolve coroutine. And if you save this and go to the enemy drake, in the dissolving controller we can assign the animator, which is right here. Oh and by the way, don't forget to set the death animation, the rig, to humanoid. And instead of creating from this model, we can copy from an existing avatar and we can select the one we have previously created, apply the changes and then in the animation tab, turn on root transform position XZ and apply the changes. And now if we go back to Drake, we can assign the animator, simply drag and drop, the skin and mesh, which is this one, the VFX graph, and I'm gonna leave this as it is. And if we set the dissolve amount back to zero, and test it out, now we should probably see, whenever we press the space bar, a disintegrating enemy effect. It's not perfect, as you can see, whenever he dies, whenever the die animation plays, it goes down. That's because I have also offset the idle animation. If you have offset the root transform position like I did, then you also need to offset it again in the death animation. And now it should work out well. Now it's all a matter of making some adjustments, like for example to the color of the particles, the rate, the amount of particles, and the size of the particles as well. And then you can make some adjustments to the dissolving shader. But yeah, you can get to this with a few adjustments. If you have any questions, leave them on the comments, please. And it looks awesome. You can then even add some dark particles. If you check out my channel, you can learn more about VFX Graph. And for the shooting projectiles part, I really recommend you to check out this tutorial. It will definitely help you out. As you can see, I have the projectile here with the bullet tag, a sphere collider, a rigid body, and the projectile script. This part is only for the impact, which means I check if it has hit an object with the enemy tag, and then I trigger the dissolve from the dissolving control script. That's for the projectile. Now to shoot projectiles, I have this guy right here with a character controller, a movement input, and then the projectile shooter, which may seem like a lot, but this is for the camera shake and the chromatic aberration. What matters is that in the update I check if I press the fire button, I play the attack animation, I stop the movement for a while, and then I shoot the projectile, where we create a ray from the center of the camera towards where we are looking, and if it hits something, we save that destination vector. If it doesn't, we get a point in the ray. Then we instantiate the projectile, where we check if we have a warm up, if we have an audio source, we wait a little while before spawning the projectile, so it synchronizes with the animation. Then we shake the camera, we do the chromatic aberration, and we spawn the projectile in the fire point. And we get a distance vector from the fire point to the destination. We normalize that distance and multiply it with projectile speed, and apply that to the velocity of the rigid body of the projectile. But like I said, you can learn more about it in this tutorial. And after making some adjustments, here's the final result. I know it's a little bit complex this effect, at least trying to explain everything, but I think if you follow the tutorials you came up with a nice result, it's a good starting point. And I hope you have enjoyed it. If you wanna have access to this project, it's available on my Patreon page, and by supporting me you get access to these and many more projects as well. A big thank you goes to each patron, and a special shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are Alak Frost, Bradford Arendt, Brian Trujillo, Curtis Henry, Dan Kruger, David Crew, Diego Cataldo, Gillian Voy, Goblin Plague, Hostile Mars Game, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Luis Peloso, Mikhail, Oitsk, Playing Sack Boy, Sverving Tree, Tirita, and Unknown Nigma. You guys rock, you guys are awesome, your support really means a lot, and I appreciate it a lot. I hope you have all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.